All right, I think we're probably live, so we're going to, in this video or stream, we're going to try to implement, uh, okay, so like the setup that we were doing yesterday is we, we're, we're doing the very simple thing where you, where you, where you have random pixels and, uh, and then you um, run them through a pre-trained image classifier and you uh, use the gradients uh, of the pixels with respect to one of the class outputs to uh, to maximize that class output, and um, and so th the thing is is that it works. So for instance, like these images are all classified with very high probability as um, uh, analog clocks. And so the interesting thing is that, like, you know, like, they don't obviously look like analog clocks. So we're trying to figure out why, you know, like, why are they being classified as analog clocks? And so we're trying to use a, um, what I think is, like, the current uh, SOTA, state-of-the-art, well, I mean, one, one approach for model explainability, I, I think particularly for, like, image models. Um, I know, I know there's like other approaches, but, um, yeah, we're just, I, I think this is the one that you would use most naturally for images. And, uh, yeah, so grad cam. And, uh, so we're trying to implement grad cam because, um, so, so grad cam is supposed to, like, if correctly implemented, also this is the, uh, I believe this is the paper. And like the citation there, so um, I think what it's supposed to do is like this, um, and um, you know, like this. This is the input image, and you say you basically say, I guess, like if you wanted that image to activate the cat category what pixels in the input image are most salient which I think basically means have like the highest magnitude partial derivatives so, so, so meaning like if you I guess yeah, my, my conceptual understanding of like uh, partial derivatives is uh I should probably work on that, but anyway, I think it's like if you if you tweak the individual pixel by a small amount, it changes the uh, class output. So, yeah. So I mean, like here, it's like highlighting cat, the cat pixels, and also kind of interestingly, it's um, it's found like a very odd patch in the image that looks like the head of a cat, <laughs> um, which is very weird. And I, th I think we're kind of hoping that that will happen for our random pixel images that are being classified as analog clocks. Like I'm hoping it's going to highlight you know, some subset of pixels that if you just look at those pixels, it will look like a, a, a clock. Although I, you know, I don't, I mean, I would be surprised if that happens, but like, that's what we're exploring. So it's, I mean, like, it's probably not going to happen, uh, but it is what we're exploring. So we just need to implement this uh, guided grad cam algorithm and um, I think like I think we understand the grad cam algorithm conceptually and it's just like in the stream yesterday we um, I think we ran into the well, yeah like we ran in okay so anyway let's just talk about the uh, the algorithm for grad cam and um, so it seems like the uh, first thing you do is you compute these 
alpha k c numbers which are uh, so these are neuron importance weights so uh, C is the class, like the class output. Now they, they talk about in the paper they use the class before the softmax. And in mobile net, which is the model we're using, it doesn't appear that there is a softmax. So I guess that's fine. So uh, class output, so we compute the gradient of the score of the class with respect to feature map activations A, K of a convolutional layer, i.e. partial derivative of YC uh, with respect to partial derivative A, K. Okay, so uh, feature mass. So, okay, so what is K indexing? Um, it's either indexing like the individual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the individual feature maps within a layer, right? Like a layer is a stack of feature maps. So. The A super K is talking about, the, the K is indexing the individual feature maps. Yeah, okay, so, so I mean, okay, so A sub I J K. Now this is, um, yeah, okay. So, okay, so you pick a layer, and then for each feature map, I, I think they're calling like the feature maps, like the neuron, which is kind of weird to me. I mean, to me, like an individual activation would be a neuron, but it doesn't matter. So, yeah, so like this is what we have to compute. So they're, so, so they're summing over Okay, so, so you pick a convolutional layer, you pick the kth feature map within that layer, and then you sum over the rows and the columns uh, for each ij, for each individual activation, the gradient of the class output with respect to that individual activation. And you sum, all, you sum over all of those, and then you divide by z. Uh, and what is z? Do they, do they say what Z is anywhere? They don't seem to mention Z. Yeah, they don't mention what Z is. Um, is that important, though? I mean, like, I feel that might be important. Class activation mapping. K feature maps. Spatially pooled. Feature map. FK Oh, Z is the number of pixels in the feature map. 
cool. <laughs> okay, so it's, yeah, all right. Okay, so, yeah, this is like what we need to implement. Uh, so we're picking the last layer. And uh, so I think, Um, okay, so let me load the mobile net. I have to download it and everything. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll just train it as well. So we will have a set of images called initial image, which is like not a good name, but uh, the initial image variable will contain nine images that are all classified as analog clocks and then I think we will you know run those images through the mobile net like right here and then we'll just compute the gradients and yeah, I mean like literally just use this code and then we should be able to extract the gradients for the last layer, I think. Hopefully, that's kind of what we're going for. And oh yeah, no, that's actually not going to work because, well, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like we need to take the gradient with respect to model dot trainable weights. And then that should give the gradients for every single activation in the model. And then we extract the last layer activations. And once, or the last layer gradients. And then we compute this to get our alpha CKs. And then, um, and then you do this. So, okay, so we now have initial images and we have our model. And so I need to just copy paste this and see if we can actually extract Oh, yeah, no. No, I think that's fine. I mean, like, when it computes... Yeah, because, like, we don't want the gradients of the weights. We want the gradients of the activations. But I think that's fine. This is going to be highly annoying. Okay, so don't apply any gradients. Just compute. Um, target class, gradient. We don't want it with respect to the initial image. We want it with respect to model dot light not just trainable variables, but like all. I mean, I want the activation, so I don't know how you express that. Non-trainable variables? Would that be cool? Maybe I should Google this. That would probably work. Oh, dang. Yeah, that's not cool. That's not cool at all. I mean, I feel like the other thing I could do would be to split into two models. The first model gives you the layer activations 
you then like cast those as a variable and then you run them through the second half and then you can presumably compute the gradients with respect to the, to those variables. I can see if there's like a better way of doing that though. Okay, TensorFlow compute gradients with respect to activations. Mm-hmm, good old stack overflow. I'm trying to visualize the kind of images that activate a particular filter of an intermediate layer. I need to compute the gradient of the mean of the activations in that filter with respect to the input image, and then update the image with gradient ascent. Here I'm trying to get the output of filter activation model tape dot gradient loss inputs stays in terms of by replacing the call function of the model. Um I don't think that's my problem, is it? No. Loss inputs. Um, what if I just say model? I mean, that's probably not going to work. Mm-hmm. model what about just like all well no I guess I mean the only thing I can think of is Yeah. Right. I mean, that doesn't even make sense. Um, okay, I'm going to do the split approach because I can't think of any other way of doing this. Alright, I'm just gonna do the split. Just gonna be annoying as heck. Okay, so Okay, so the layer We need we need to get the layer outputs and then convert them to a variable. And then Okay, so this is the layer that we are interested in, and then a remainder. of Keras layers, just an input layer, right? 
Yeah. Okay, so it's a new input layer and and it's um, the size of this. Okay, is that cool? Oh no, it's not cool. That is not cool. Why not? Relu object has no no attribute shape. Oh god. Graph disconnected cannot obtain value. Model dot output. Well, um, I guess it doesn't look like you doing that. Okay, use intermediate layer as input. Huh. Well, this turns out to be impossible. Has anybody implemented this in TensorFlow? I can, I can see how they did it. Class activation, heat map. Okay, good, good. Okay, good, good. Get image array. Uh huh. Make grad cam heat map. I mean, I 
guess I could just directly copy paste this. That would probably work. Per image, model, layers, heat map, display the heat map. Okay. And then superimpose. Yeah, it's like they upscale the heat map, which is weird. Try another image. This is exactly what I was trying to do. This <laughs> was like completely exactly what I'm doing. Nice. Nice. Okay. So how do they implement the heat map? First we create a model. Yeah, that's what I was doing. That maps the input image to the activations of the last convolator. Oh, as well as the output predictions. Oh. That's some next level stuff. Then we compute the gradient of the top predicted class for our input image with respect to the activations of the last convoyer. Oh my god. Tape. This is a vector where each entry is the mean intensity. Reduce mean. How important this channel is. Sum all the channels. Wow. Okay. Cool. 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 Um, test drive it. Heat map. Remove last layer's soft max. Oh, that's how you test the activation, huh? Okay, let me. Yeah, and uh, what is the activation on the last layer? I think it's a Raylu, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, I think I'm just gonna copy paste this to see if we can get it to work. Uh, and then probably kill video. Cause um, this turned out to be a lot of API stuff. reference always reference code it's good practice okay so um 
I think for this, I just need to say model, because I don't know what the name of it is. So I'll just say layers negative three output, model output. Uh, okay, grad model. Class channel. I don't need to do this or this or this. And I want to run. Let's just call it initial image, I think. Image array. So, uh, oh, prediction index also needs to be Predicted analog clock, 99% probability. And uh, actually, what's the shape of the heat map? Seven by seven. numpy uh, the first element yeah so it's saying like it's picking up analog clock activity over there so let me add, let's see, oh, I forgot how you do this. Yeah, add one, divide by two. So saying like these pixels are most important for analog clock classification. So could you like literally kill all the other pixels? 
and it would still say analog clock. Oh, so we, we don't know 100% that it's saying, well, I, well, yeah, it is saying analog clock. Okay, uh, I'm going to look at that code more. We're making progress, though. Like, I think, like, the next thing I'm going to do maybe later is, uh, yeah, try to do the overlay. Um, well, and, and also like do the pixel. Uh, highlight the like specific pixels wherever that is. Yeah, like we we eventually want to end up with guided grad cam. So if we have grad cam, where do you, where do we get guided? grad cam guided back propagation pixels detective eye neurons not the ones that's suppressed neurons Okay, so they also use something called guided backpropagation. And and then they just like upsample the grad cam. Element wise multiplication. So they upsample the grad cam and then they just do element wise multiplication with the guided backpropagation. So we just have to look up Guided back propagation. Guided back propagation. I forgot the back. Uh, yeah, I want like the actual paper though. So, oops. So the actual paper, 53. Striving for simplicity, the all convolutional net. Twenty fourteen. Wow. This is old stuff. Okay, I'm gonna like read this and uh, maybe uh. Maybe have a more exciting stream later. You never know. <laughs> 